Have you ever had a conversation with a colleague, a friend, a coworker, and in that conversation had an aha moment, a light bulb moment, and you realized something about yourself that you did not realize before? Hi, I'm Dorothy Hendricks, your communication coach in presentation skills and the art of speaking. Not too long ago, I was having a conversation with a friend. We're sitting in the coffee shop, you know, talking about work-related issues. And at one point she shares with me some of the challenges she's having with her staff and asks, Dorothea, what do you think I should do? Out of my mouth, out of my mouth comes, well, why don't you ask your staff? I look up. And I see the shocked look on my friend's face. And I knew, I knew it wasn't the words I was using, but it was the tone of my voice. She was looking for support and I put her on the defense. When she asked me the question, I wasn't really paying attention. I was more focused on myself because just moments before I had spilt some coffee on the edge of my computer and on me. And I was having a hissy fit inside. I was angry with myself and upset with myself. And so when I heard the question, I answered the question and attached a big emotional and gave her a verbal dump. I had no right to do that. And my friend was definitely, it was something that she didn't expect. She was shocked and no wonder, as I said, she got on the defense. People react to the sound of our voice. They often react less to our words and more to how we make them feel. The tone of our voice carries our communication and how we communicate with each other, that kind of defines our relationships and our relationships depend more. They depend more on how we make each other feel rather than the words we use. I had no right to do a verbal and emotional dump on my friend. And when I realized what I'd done, I decided on the spot, I was not going to do that again. And I now follow these five steps and I can do them in a blink of an eye, but I'll share these five steps with you. If I find in a conversation that my attention has drifted ever so much, and even if it hasn't, if I'm asked a question or when I'm asked a question, number one, I pause. I pause. Number two, I check in with myself. I become aware of what I'm feeling. Number three, if I'm feeling or what I'm feeling, I understand where those feelings are coming from. And feelings are always coming from me. Can't nowhere else. They're always inside of me. And then I make a decision number four. Yes, I'm aware of my feelings. I can control my feelings if I'm upset or angry. Yeah, that's part of me. But I can also continue this conversation in a reasonable, sane manner. And I go ahead and do so. Or number five, no, I can't continue this conversation. I have to make that decision because I am just being led by the nose with these feelings. They've overtaken me and I can't control them. And so then I have to say to my conversation partner, whoever it is, you know what? I'm really upset right now. Uh, it has nothing to do with you, but I just can I just have five minutes just to take some time out? Let me cool down and then maybe we'll continue the conversation. So those are my five steps. They worked for me. I've now done them, practiced them quite a bit, so you can do them in a blink of an eye. Until next time, a bit more about communication and how we connect and relate with each other when it comes to presenting our ideas, ourselves. See me next time on YouTube. Until then, this is Dorothea Hendricks wishing you, wishing you mountains of success.